Everything's set up, and I'm now ready for Stifled. Are you ready, Beep? So, let's begin! Really? A power cut right at the beginning of starting a new game? Stifled review for the PlayStation Fear. Let's begin! First up, let's take a look at the gameplay. There is two types of gameplay in this game. The first is exploration. In these parts you will be mainly walking around a house. You can interact with quite a few things here, such as opening drawers and cupboards, and you can even pick up some objects to take a closer look. Scattered around the house is quite a few text documents. You will want to read these, otherwise you won't have a very good understanding of the storyline at all. The second gameplay type is a fairly basic stealth game. When these stealth sections occur, you cannot see what is in front of you, and you must use echolocation. Making less sound only reveals a smaller part of the area, whilst larger sounds reveal more. You will want to be more quiet when enemies are nearby, as they will hear you, and it is an instant death if they catch you. The instant death does make for sneaking around sections a bit more intense, but some of the checkpoints are a bit far apart, and sneaking through a segment again can become a bit tiresome, especially as your crouching movement is quite slow and you can't run. There isn't many enemy types in the game, and the AI is basic, as they only give chase, but new enemies do so in different ways. When I started to get bored with an enemy type's movement, the game moved on from it and introduced me to a new one. You can pick up rocks and other items to chuck and lure enemies away from your position. You'll be doing this a lot and you will certainly have to pre-plan your approach to getting through each environment. When you walk through water, enemies can hear you splashing. I've never been so afraid of crossing a stream of water in a game before. Overall, the sneaking segments do feel a bit like a puzzle, which you must navigate your way through, and they do provide some very intense moments. Now let's take a look at how immersive this unique art style is. All the text documents are very easy to read, and the writing itself is very well done. The story revolves around a man who has a tragic past, and it really does reveal the story at a steady pace. I've played a lot of games and have watched a lot of movies, so I often thought I knew where this game's story was heading, only to find out I was completely wrong. Obviously, I loved being surprised. The exploration segments are very detailed, are an absolute joy to explore every nook and cranny. Drawers even have different items inside. It's little details like these that make these VR worlds even more believable, and that they are actually lived in. It's quite a shock going into the nightmarish world for the first time, as the detail is lacking and the environments are simple. The edges of objects can be blurry if they are far away, but because of the art style, it didn't really bother me personally. It really is incredible to see the world appearing in front of you, and how it displays itself is incredibly fluid. It really is fun to see new areas appear from an item impacting and making a sound. It's visually quite a unique VR experience. There isn't too much sound to be heard, and it does fit with the storyline and the feeling of isolation. You do hear drips of water coming from pipes, and also when you walk through a stream of water, it does sound quite creepy. <laughs> Hey! Hello! Now let's take a look at the setup and what controllers the game supports. I played this game in a seated position just under 2 metres away from the camera. The head tracking was perfect and the game did not give me motion sickness. The game does have some options for people who do suffer with motion sickness. You can turn snap turning on and also enable black edges that appear on screen for when you turn. This game has a unique microphone gameplay mechanic. You can actually talk or shout into your microphone to make the world appear in front of you. This was fun for a little while but unfortunately it did get a bit annoying as you'll end up needing to speak to see the world every 5 seconds or so. After a while, I was just shouting random noises so that the environment was visible. It did take me out of the game's story, as I was just shouting nonsense to proceed. Rose! Where are you, Rose? Rose! Yoo-hoo!
Luckily, there is an option to assign the character you embody to make a noise. The longer you hold down for button 4, the louder his voice will be, and more of the environment will be revealed. So this is the way I played for the majority of the game. This game is played with a DualShock controller. One move controller and two move controllers are not supported. The game can also be played in a non-VR mode. Now let's take a look at how long the game is, and what trophies come with it. It took me just over 3 hours to beat. I did miss some of the text documents too, so if you are lucky enough to find them, you can add some more time onto that. If you are going for the game's platinum trophy, you are going to be in this world for a long time. In total there are 26 trophies that can be achieved. There is 9 bronze, 10 silver, 6 gold, and one platinum. Some trophies are hidden on the PlayStation Network, and although I don't think they ruin anything, I'm not going to show them just in case. Some trophies are your average ones for this type of game, like reading a certain amount of letters, but some are quite unique, such as beating the game without throwing anything unnecessarily, and one is for not making a voice pulse. I highly doubt you'll get all the trophies on your first playthrough. After I beat the game, I had 44% of the trophies. And now it's time for the verdict. This game is of high quality and it shows throughout. The sneaking gameplay segments are fun and are visually a treat, but far apart checkpoints may frustrate some players. The simple looking environments made me not too scared of the game, but there are some moments that really are creepy. The story here is the main attraction and is quite deep. It's superbly written, and the environments reflect the emotion that the character is going through. I won't spoil the ending, but there is an option at the end where you can choose from two outcomes. If you get an ending which you believe is unworthy of what the game is leading up to, you simply have to go back to the chapter select screen which unlocks, and choose the other option. Great care has gone into the exploration segments, and when you see the better ending, I actually think if you replayed the game, a lot of things would stand out to you. Overall, if you don't mind reading a lot of text in games, and like the looks of exploring this new art style, you are in for a treat. In my opinion, this game is currently the must-play VR game if you are a fan of standard similar games, such as Firewatch or Gone Home. You definitely don't want to look away from this one. I give Stifled a score of... 8 out of 10. So, let's begin! Really? A power cut right at the beginning of starting a new game? What. The. Beep? If you're looking for a new story heavy experience, and don't mind reading text to get the full picture, then this game's for you. The plot kept me guessing all the way through, which is surprising for me as I normally know where it's heading. If you enjoyed this review and found it helpful, please give me and Beep a thumbs up. 